In this video, we will be entering a Nickelodeon rabbit hole. I will be discussing some controversial and disturbing things. This video is for entertainment purposes only because your girl does not want to get sued even though I don't think I will. Everything is already public knowledge and check your sources. Do your own research. The intention of this video is to bring to light some deep, dark creep that has been happening at the network, but also to show you guys how spiritual and enlightening some Nickelodeon TV shows really were. Not that long ago, there were no such things as content creators, and thank God there are now because back in the day, 20, 30 years ago, corporations ran everything, including our at home entertainment. They ran the media, pushed certain narratives, and easily persuaded the population. There are companies like CBS, which owns a majority of almost all networks like MTV, Comedy Central, Nickelodeon, Paramount, and the list goes on and on. From the late 70s to early 2000s, kids mainly had only three TV options, Disney Channel, Cartoon Network, and Nickelodeon. As a kid, I absolutely loved Nickelodeon, but what if I were to tell you that there were multiple dark secrets behind your favorite childhood shows? 15 years ago, Nickelodeon was in its prime and was everything to most kids. Looking back, I didn't realize this back then, but Nickelodeon inspired me to start my own YouTube channel back in 2008. I remember recreating skits that I saw on All That or iCarly, and it was such a fun time for me. I didn't even realize that, but I do now because I'm older and wiser. I'm fully aware of how impressionable and innocent children really are. So we have to make sure we're not only protecting our own kids, but all of the kids in the world. It's no secret that our favorite childhood stars have been abused by the network, but were you aware that Nickelodeon has been programming our minds and introducing us to inappropriate topics since we were kids? Oh, I got abused by Dan Schneider in a, an exec room. When I was a kid, one of my favorite Nickelodeon shows was All That, but I knew from a very young age it was very inappropriate and weird, but I didn't realize how disturbing it was until I watched certain clips as an adult. Do you know what this meat is that the Earthers speak of? Oh yes, we learned about it in school. It is the flesh of animals cooked for human consumption. Ah! <laughs> but how do we get this meat? Uh, excuse me, y'all got a restroom here I can use? <laughs> yes, yes, our restroom is in here, through the kitchen. Meat for you! Meat for you! Meat for you! Meat for you! Mmm! <laughs> now this is more like it. Mmm! Excellent! <laughs> Wait, what kind of meat is this? Uh, well, you know, meat. Brian Robbins, who is now the CEO of Paramount Pictures and Nickelodeon, executively produced all that, along with Dan Schneider. I want to say thank you to Nickelodeon, Brian Robbins, Dan Schneider, Mike Tolan, and Mike Goldman. I love you guys. Brian, you are not only CEO of Paramount Pictures and Nickelodeon, but also oversee content, your chief content officer for film, as well as the family and kids division of Paramount+. Plus. Brian would later move on to executively produce The Kenan and Kel Show and Good Burger. So it's safe to assume that he worked closely with Kenan Thompson for many years. And it just so happens that Kenan Thompson has picked up some sort of behavior, and I'm wondering from who? On December 1st, 2022, images were leaked online of Thompson's alleged relationship with a 19-year-old girl whose dream was to become a famous musician. Thompson, who was 44 at the time, might have gone on numerous dates with this 19-year-old. And just to put it in perspective, there's a 25-year gap 
but it gets weirder. There are images of him going out to dinner with her, taking her backstage on SNL. There's just so much proof that this wasn't just a casual hangout. Allegedly, they became official after his messy divorce with his ex-wife. The timing of everything to me is just really weird. He gets out of this long-time relationship and the next person he decides to date is a girl that he's been mentoring since she was 15 years old. It's just strange and it's giving groomer vibes, like... No. No. On December 4th, just a few days after this information got leaked, Kiki Palmer along with Cal Mitchell guest starred on SNL. Sit down on the couch and flip on that telly, getting wild as a style of Keenan and Kelly. I'm a blast some laughs when you come home from school, cause Keenan and Kelly gonna break all the rules. The skit sparked rumors of a Kenan and Kel reboot, and the original story about his relationship got pushed back on the back burner. Around the same time Kenan Thompson was a part of Nickelodeon, there was another individual named Justin Smith who was working behind the scenes on very popular Nickelodeon shows. At the age of 27, Justin Smith worked for Nickelodeon as a freelance post protection editor for almost all their shows in the early 2000s, such as Dora the Explorer, The Fairly Odd Parents, Danny Phantom, My Life as a Teenage Robot, SpongeBob SquarePants, and many more. Smith was caught on How to Catch a which was a show on Dateline NBC in 2007 and was hosted by Chris Hansen. In the show, Chris Hansen collaborated with law enforcement to expose individuals who were attempting to engage in illegal activities with minors through online communication. Despite his initial doubts, he ended up showing up to the sting house anyways and was confronted by Chris Hansen. He then proceeded to convince police to let him off the hook so it didn't hurt his career. And it worked. Smith is taken to the processing center where a police investigator interviews him. I'd be lucky if I have any sort of resemblance to my job. He avoided jail time, but was given a five-year probation and had to register as a offender. Despite all of this, Nickelodeon rehired him in 2011 and then again in 2019 as a recording engineer for SpongeBob SquarePants. I can't believe Justin Smith worked on SpongeBob SquarePants because in my opinion, that is probably one of the most spiritual shows on the network. It actually talks about very conceptual ideas if you do decide to watch it as an adult, one being dreamwalking and astral projection. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen <gasps> SpongeBob? Gary? How dare you invade the sanctity of my dreams? Gary, you can talk! <sighs> In dreams, one is not tethered by earthly limitations. What does that mean? Come. For ages, dreams have been thought of as windows to another realm. I remember watching that episode as a kid and thinking to myself how cool it would be to actually consciously enter one of my friend's dreams, not knowing until I grew up and started my own spiritual journey that that is actually true. It actually exists. And that's not the only other enlightening show. Remember the Wild Thornberries? The show aired on Nick from 98 to 04. Eliza had the secret ability to communicate with animals. The basis of the show was really focused on climate change. And in my opinion, there was a lot of predictive programming in that TV show as well. In my next YouTube video, I'm actually going to be posting a video that I did interviewing a dreamwalker, someone that can actually consciously enter dreams. So if you wanna see content like that conscious content, be sure to subscribe and turn on those post notifications. Justin Smith isn't on the Nickelodeon Creep Club, but it's worth considering how many other workers or freelancers associated with the network didn't make it onto the list. It's been speculated that when a young actor landed a big role on Nickelodeon, the parents would often go celebrate to a networking party while the children would attend a graduation party to meet the executives. And they were often asked to wear a swimsuit and open toes so they could have pictures of their feet taken. He would go around with money and ask to take photos of the kids' feet. Mm -hmm. I'm and sorry, yes, the kids' feet. Yes. The children's feet. feet. Okay. Yeah, th right. their toes. Okay. And I remember thinking it was weird and silly almost as a kid. And I remember my mom going, don't go over there. My mom actually said, no, 
mm -hmm. to it. But I saw other parents allowing their kids to do it. In the 1980s, Marty Weiss made a name for himself as Hollywood's top talent manager. The majority of the kids he worked with landed big roles in Hollywood movies and TV networks like Nickelodeon and Disney Channel. Some of his clients worked on Good Luck Charlie, iCarly, Jack and Jill, and The Muppets. However, Marty's career took a turn for the worse in the mid-2000s when his clients grew older and started speaking out against him. You're not recording this, right? No, I'm not. But I didn't at 12. I was not interested. Like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't, because you asked me if I wanted to touch it. In 2003, he was found guilty for SA, and in 2012, he actually went to prison but got out early for good behavior. Only six months later, he's now a free man and active on all his social media platforms. I know about Marty's story because he was mentioned in two different documentaries. First, in 2014, An Open Secret, which was a film exposing child abuse in the film industry in California. And in 2020, My Truth, the of two Corys. In my opinion, there's absolutely no remorse for Marty because he allegedly silenced parents of young actors for speaking out about the accusations against him and networks like Nickelodeon and Disney. So no one actually knows the number of victims he actually essayed because in my opinion, he is being protected by these Hollywood elites and networks like Nickelodeon and Disney. All I'm saying is Marty Weiss didn't make it onto the Nickelodeon Cube Club list for no reason. And this is where the problem starts. This is where the problem starts. The kids of these TV shows are now getting into this loop that they just cannot get out of if they are victims. Because what is going on is a pattern, a vicious and sick pattern. Children in Hollywood are being Do we know that? But children in Hollywood as they grow older, are then given the opportunity to be silenced by signing NDAs and taking money in compensation for their trauma. So naturally, I began to do research into who was in charge during this time, who ran Nickelodeon, who ran Disney, who was responsible for hiring all these different and my research honestly led me back to one person, but in my honest opinion, this one person is not responsible for everything that has been done at Nickelodeon and Disney, obviously. But this one person should really, really, really be held accountable. In 1974, Geraldine Lyborn co-founded the Media Center for Children, which she was involved with until 1977. It is very ironic why she even started this company. It's because she was concerned with the content her children were consuming. She then began working at Nickelodeon in 1980 when the network was only one year old. She was one of the first people ever to focus on television for children. This climbed the corporate ladder. She spent 15 years at Nickelodeon taking over the management of the network and started accepting advertising for the network in 1984. Leiborn had brought in so much money for the company that she was appointed president of Nickelodeon that same year. Leiborn and her team were responsible for building the Nickelodeon brand. She contributed to launching Nick at Night and expanded the network into other countries, developing theme parks and creating Nickelodeon magazine movies, toys, and more. Under her leadership, Nickelodeon X Loaded. The network had a 40% profit margin and explosive growth every year. She's responsible for growing the tiny cable network, which only had five employees in 1980 into an $8 billion business. Everything sounds great until you find out that Geraldine Layborn and her husband, Kit Layborn, had a personal connection to and was noted in official documentation of the Lolita Express, which is official private jet. It's deep, dark, and I just feel like I scratched the surface. Despite all of this, in 2020, Geraldine Leiborn was then admitted into the Television Hall of Fame. But I am not done. This rabbit hole gets deeper because Geraldine Leiborn then founded the Oxygen Media Company with none other than Oprah Winfrey. According to Google, Oprah is the first African-American woman to be a billionaire. And because of how powerful and 
wealthy she is, I honestly think the media, along with Nickelodeon, has been programming us to believe that she is an amazing person that deserves our energy, our attention, and our wealth. But in reality, I honestly think Oprah is a sh person. And everything that has come out within these past couple of months, not only about Nickelodeon, but with Cat Williams and Monique, there's just no doubt that she has just been doing people dirty for such a long time. On January 2nd, 2007, Oprah opened up a boarding school in South Africa called the Leadership Academy of Girls because she made a promise to Nelson Mandela. However, the South African government was against her building the high-end school with salons and gyms because of the location is primarily filled with low-income individuals and the school cost her 40 million dollars to build. The strangest thing of it all is when the school was first open, Oprah handpicked 152 female students to live at the facility free of charge and shortly after that, the scandals began. The trial of a former dormitory matron charged with abusing six students at Oprah Winfrey School for Girls in South Africa is resuming. Prosecutors say former dorm matron Tina Virginia Macopo tried to kiss and fondle the girls. She was arrested yesterday for several charges, including uh, assault, indecent assault, as well as uh, soliciting girls. There's a common theme within this video, which is multiple sex offenders aren't being charged or they're serving very little time in jail for the crimes that they have committed. And Virginia Macapo is one of those people. She was cleared of all charges and didn't have to face any jail time. When I looked deeper into this incident, I found that Virginia sued Oprah for defamation. So the question is, did Virginia Macapo see something or know something about the school that we don't know? In February 2011, CNN broke the news that a baby was found unalive in a bag belonging to a 17-year-old female student. Unfortunately, the autopsy couldn't determine if the baby died upon birth or if it was intentional. How was she even able to get pregnant? And even if she was pregnant, people would have probably clearly known and did not get the girl help. So that's where I'm kind of just like, what is going on with Oprah? What is going on with this school? And that leads into this rumor that unfortunately the school may be a cover up for a human scandal. I don't know if that's true and I'm not claiming that to be true, but the fact that so many incidences happened at this one school, I could see why people would start to think this is a human cover up. And I wanted to be able to be in control so I could manage what was going to happen in their lives. Uh, soliciting girls under the age to commit indecent assault. Do you think it's a coincidence that Geraldine Laybourne and Oprah Winfrey, who co-founded a media company together, Oxygen Media, have alleged ties to individuals related to child and human that's now the question because what are the odds that they are both involved in that and they both work in the entertainment industry? But let's bring it back to the child actors. In a series of bizarre tweets over the weekend following her arrest that landed her in front of a judge on Friday, writing, I know cops cannot illegally enter my apartment, harass me, arrest me, take me to a mental hospital, then lock me up for a crime I didn't commit. You hear scuttlebutt about the business and what you gotta watch your kids and this and that, so I was very attentive. I was just numb when he told me. I was like, how could this happen, you know? And how could I not have seen it? He just seemed like a great guy. Just touch Drake. You know, do things that, wait a second, what are you doing? Drake can put that on himself. I felt like I was almost the only one who came forward in like 2018 about him. And no one really listened. The saddest part of it all is that they are now adults healing from their pain and not being able to make a single dime off of reruns. There's no residuals. And absolutely, they are just being used till this day and not being paid for the work that they have once given up their time, their energy, their childhood to create. They're making a sandwich out of my foot. <laughs> However, the truth is coming out now and it's important to realize how consciously aware you are becoming. The more consciously aware you become, you are able to raise your vibration and shift your entire reality. Reality. 
What fell? The coins fell and then your bag fell out of nowhere. And out of nowhere, as I'm talking about this, as I'm talking about raising your vibration and as I'm talking about like becoming more consciously aware, is is just changing. It's so much more deeper than Nickelodeon programming us. We are spiritual beings living a temporary human experience and some people are so aware of that that they will go to extreme lengths to hinder your intuition, to hinder your life force energy in order to prevent you from waking up and realizing because when you wake up and realize and you become aware that you could change your own reality and attract abundance and attract wealth, People don't like that. From my perspective, there has always been an agenda behind Nickelodeon and they have just been programming us with self-doubt, with limiting beliefs for years. And it's time to wake up and start unprogramming us and become aware that when you are watching these Nickelodeon shows, you are watching someone else's trauma and that energy is now being exchanged. It's not fair. My intentions behind all of my YouTube videos is to show you that life isn't really what it seems like. And if you choose to stay with the narrative and stay within the matrix, you will never be able to wake up and craft your own reality reality and awaken to this new possibility of life because there are some people on this planet that are so awoken that they will try to hinder you so they could keep you in check and keep making money off you that's essentially what i'm trying to get at and that's essentially what this video in my opinion really proves so don't forget to make the conscious effort every day to be a little bit more self-aware. Your future self would thank you for the decisions you've made in this present moment. I'm doing this for we the people of this planet.